All right. Welcome back, everyone, for uh, day four. Uh, hopefully, you guys are still feeling super energized. Uh, we're excited to welcome Barbara uh, to speak with us about uh, Global Health Corps, which is all about mobilizing youth communities, about getting the youth excited about social good. So uh, thanks for joining us, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> I think we can get right into it. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit, uh, for people who don't know, what Global Health Corps does, uh, what your mission is. Mm -hmm. um, so Global Health Corps is a fairly new organization. We're a nonprofit, and we really started around the um, belief that in order to make change in global health, we need to be engaging young people now, and particularly young leaders at the beginning of their careers, um, so that they can make change now and then continue to do so throughout their careers. Um, so essentially what we do is we partner with existing nonprofits and government organizations, primarily in East Africa and the United States, and then find out areas of need that they have. Um, and then we recruit outstanding recent college graduates and young professionals from around the world to work with them, filling those gaps for a year, um, making an impact within the organizations and the communities that they serve and obviously learning a ton from them. And throughout the year, we provide a lot of leadership development and professional development and mentorship because we're not only investing in this one year, we're investing in what they're going to do with the rest of their life. We want them to be change makers in global health throughout their life. Um, so as we started this, we started really because we noticed there's tons of interest in young people um, and social good in general, but right now in global health, and it would be a huge missed opportunity to not show young people what they can do to save people's lives um, and make sure that we're not dealing with the same global health challenges that we're dealing with right now in 10 years. Um, and our fellows are pretty incredible. Right now we have, we just added 68 new fellows from nine countries, um, and they're, some are sort of who you would think would be working in global health. They're pre-med, some are. Some have masters in public health, um, but a, a lot are, sort of non-traditional health workers. So four of our fellows have been architects, um, and that might seem weird, but actually they've been working in Rwanda with the Ministry of Health and an organization called Partners in Health um, to build a brand new district hospital in this very rural district called Barrera, which is a district of 300,000 people um, that was really badly hurt by the genocide, and they've never had a district hospital. And so these four architects basically are using their design skills to build a hospital um, and make changes in the way that air flows throughout the hospital. So illnesses like TB that are airborne don't spread to people that come into the hospital. Um, and I think what's exciting for us is that you would never think that an architect, or maybe you wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that an architect would be a leader in global health, but um, they're tremendously changing the way that health is being dealt with and actually solving problems so that, uh, so that TB isn't a problem anymore. And so sort of using different skills that people in our generation have um, to confront challenges a lot more holistically. So I think a lot of our audience and people in the live stream are young people trying to get into social good. Mm -hmm. How did, what's your story? How did you get involved in this? And, and what advice would you give to them? Yeah. Um, well, I got involved, um, I actually studied design and I wanted to be an architect, which maybe is why I just told that story. But um, I, when I was in college, I initially um, went when I was 21, I traveled with my parents to East Africa, and it was when PEPFAR, the President's Emergency Plan for aid, aid, AIDS Relief, was being implemented. And um, it was the first time in my life that I saw how just concretely you could save someone's life. I mean, literally a month before we got there, people were dying of HIV everywhere, and they didn't have access to treatment. And because this um, huge plan, and because there were incredible health workers working in these communities, they were literally, their lives and their futures changed in a month when they had access to antiretrovirals. And while I was there, I ended up just talking with all these really committed, amazing people that were obviously working to save other people's lives. And I, I vividly remember I, um, I met this little girl who I thought was three, who was Ugandan, and she was HIV positive, and her mom had brought her there. And it turns out she was seven. But she was so little because she had had poor nutrition. She had lacked adequate health care her whole life. She just, her development had totally changed. And, um, and I don't, that image is like really seared in my mind. And, and I don't even know if she survived after that. Um, and her mom had brought her there because there was so much enthusiasm around the fact that there was finally treatment um, available to their community. And as a 21 year old, it just, for some reason that image just is imprinted in my mind and it completely changed. I just wanted to know, I, I just didn't think that girl needed to have that future, much less anyone um, that their future is affected by where they were born just seemed ridiculous to me. 
And so I came back to the US. I started taking all these, I totally changed careers, obviously. I started taking a lot of global health um, classes when I was in college. And then I met this woman who was South African. And she worked in a children's hospital there. And I sort of dreamily was like, oh, I wish I could do what you do. So she totally put me on the spot and was like, OK, do come and work for me. So I did. So I moved to South Africa, and I started working for her in this children's hospital. And essentially, I assisted her and another doctor and basically did whatever they needed. So um, filled a lot of gaps, spent a lot of time with a lot of kids who were in the hospital um, whose parents couldn't stay with them because they had to go back to work. They couldn't afford for their children to receive health care and stay in the hospital. And through that, I ended up working with UNICEF in Botswana to sort of explore how you can keep kids from getting to hospitals by making sure that they have access to health and proper nutrition just on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it all was sort of organic and made sense to me. And I came back to the US, and I actually worked for an architecture firm for six weeks and was like sourcing marble for a house in the Hudson River Valley or something, and it seemed really weird. And I wasn't interested in that anymore. Um, so I, I got back to working in the global health fields. And we started Global Health Corps two years ago. Um, really, I think I had noticed that I, I was lucky and that I met this woman and I got to work with her. Um, and I could follow my passion and, and work with, you know, work in global health and obviously now work with amazing young people that are trying to change the world around them. But a lot of people didn't have that opportunity. Um, and so through a conference that Google hosted um, with, this, with UNAIDS, um, two years ago, I met some other young people that are our co-founders. Two are from Google, and two are from an advocacy organization called FaceAIDS. And we started brainstorming around the fact that young people do want to make a difference. It's just hard to figure out what your first step in your career is. And we had all seen how Teach for America had totally changed the conversation around education in the country. And when people were graduating from college, even if they had never studied education, they wanted to do TFA. And we really felt like a similar model could be employed for global health. And, and we've been really thrilled to see the interest. Um, we received thousands of applications for relatively very few positions with Global Health Corps. Um, and it's a huge missed opportunity if you can't engage young people and, and being a huge part of the solution right now. Well, how do you engage young people? And what, what is, you know, speaking to, to some of your co-founders actually coming from Google, mm -hmm. um, what is the role of technology in engaging mm -hmm. young people now? Um, I mean, there's obviously a huge role for technology. Um, we, so we're two years old. We haven't had the capacity to reach out, you know, to do a ton of recruiting or get the message out. Um, so we've relied completely on technology and web-based platforms to get the word out. And so um, our first year, no one had heard of us. Or they shouldn't have heard of us. We had 22 fellowship positions, and we received a few thousand applications for those positions because people had seen us online. Um, and I think what we've seen, the reason that Google had this conference in the first place, the conference was called AIDS 2031. At the time, HIV was 25 years old. And the, the conference was focused on what's going to happen in the next 25 years. And basically, we know right now how to prevent and treat the majority of illnesses that are killing people. And we have these amazing tools. Now we have technology. And they wanted to think through, OK, we know what to do. How can we use technology to make this faster so that in 25 years, we, HIV is not a problem? Um, and so that was the whole thinking around, OK, we're so lucky in that we have technology now. We can reach a ton of people. I think the reason that a lot of young people are applying to Global Health Corps is because they've grown up connected to people around the world. Even if they're from Michigan, they could know what's going on in Burundi. Um, and so uh, young people are very curious about global challenges now. And I mean, I'm happy they're curious about global health. But I think it's because we've seen through technology what's happening around the world and then realize, it, get passionate and realize you can maybe do something about it. What is your thinking on this generation? Are they more excited about social good issues? Uh, is this a different generation? Um, that's a good question, because I only know this generation, so I don't know like <laughs> the previous generations. If they were excited, I assume they were. I think one thing that um, I've noticed is different is um, if something, or a lot of my colleagues and a lot of my peers, if something doesn't exist, then they've made it exist. Um, and I think there's been, you know, there's sort of a luxury of movement right now um, for our generation, and that paths can go in very different, um, career paths can go in very different ways than have traditionally been done. Um, I'm not sure 
30 years ago, if a girl my age would be sitting up here saying that she started her own nonprofit and was working with people from nine countries. Um, so I think, I think there's a tremendous desire to do good in this generation and be very entrepreneurial and think about things in a different way, mm -hmm. which in global health, that's crucial. We have to think about things in a different way because we can't just do things the same way they've been done or we're never going to get over the same problems that we've been talking about for several years. How do you, and again, a lot of our audience are, are young people trying to get into social good. How do you, you know, build a following for a movement? Can you use technology? What are the tools that you use to try and get started? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you can definitely use technology. I think one thing that's been really successful for Global, Global Health Corps is also creating alliances. So the One Campaign does an incredible job of outreach and advocacy. Um, there's other organizations like Face Aids and Globe Med that are specifically working on college campuses to engage young people and just get them thinking about global health issues and then get them to use their voice on them. Um, and those already exist. And so Global Health Corps has been really lucky to partner with all three of those organizations um, to say, okay, you're thinking, you're 20, you're thinking about global health issues. When you graduate, come and join us and, and move from thinking about them into action and use your skills that you have um, to make change. And so I think uh, technology is huge and partnering with organizations that are already doing a great job of reaching people helps you or has helped us. Okay, uh, we've got time for like maybe a couple more questions. I'd love to know um, how uh, you personally use social media. Is it something that you're passionate about? Uh, any particular uh, <laughs> sites you enjoy? I do use social media. Um, I mean, I do it mainly for work. Right. Um, and so, you know, we I'm essentially, it's a luxury to be able to stay connected to people mm -hmm. from around the world. Um, and obviously, I'd imagine there's there's also uh, a risk though when you when you are a public figure to be very cautious about how you're using social media. Yeah. Well, I don't have my own Twitter account to be honest, right. um, because I'm a really private person. And um, but at the same time, I see the enormous benefit of connecting with others um, on a personal note that have been really important in my life that may not live in the U.S. Um, so it's a, a really easy way to stay connected and I think stay informed. And um, I think what I was saying about, you know, changing the way that we're approaching problems so that we aren't talking about them in the future, you can learn so much from what other people have done that has worked or hasn't worked. So it's so easy to share information now that it shouldn't be a problem. You know, no one should be reinventing the wheel because we have access to knowing what everyone else has done. Um, and we have to take advantage of that. Well, speaking of ways that, that we can connect online, how could people, if they're interested in following up on GHC, how yeah. can they find out about it? Um, obviously, on our website, which is ghcore.org, and as an organization, we're on Twitter, and I do do that, and obviously on Facebook, and um, we have a lot of great videos that our fellows have created um, telling their own stories and um, showing sort of the work that they've done in the field. Um, online, and I think it's it's really it's probably a lot more fun to hear our, our fellows' stories and how they got engaged and what they've been able to do. And so we're trying to maximize um, their presence online as well. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, we're out of time, so thanks so much to Barbara for joining us, and uh, good luck to any uh, young people trying to get into social. Yeah, care. and if you're interested in global health, you should definitely apply to be a Global Health Corps fellow. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs>